Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm a tra traditional naturopath. I'm so excited to share with Pearl today. Hey everybody, it's Pearl. Welcome back to another Conversations with Pearl. And you know me, I'm with Women's Successful Living, and we're here to bring just conversations about self-care, self-worth, and everything we have to do to put ourselves first and overcome being that people pleaser. So today is no different. I'm so excited to have our guest on the show today. And Laura Nelson, she is an alternative healthcare practitioner who after 16 years of being housebound and bedbound, learned how to heal herself. She now helps people turn normal labs into answers, healing, and hope. And I'm so excited to share all about Lauren today. And we, we talk a good language around naturopaths. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Get your pen and paper out. And hey, Lauren, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. This is going to be a fun chat. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself. And you know, I was just sitting here thinking as I was reading your bio, we were talking about your husband, so you kind of did it for him too. So we'll talk about that during the show as well. But yeah, tell everybody about yourself and what brought you down to the, the path you're on today. Oh my goodness. It's been a long road. I am, I'm a traditional naturopath and health coach. I work online and I, um, I really found natural health, oh, geez, about 20 years ago when I was diagnosed with celiac disease. Um, back then, you know, Dr. Google wasn't really a thing. There wasn't a lot of information on gluten-free celiac. There was one book and, um, and I'm really honestly surprised that I was even able to get a diagnosis at the time. But, um, so I started learning what we put in our bodies, how much it matters, what, what do we eat? Does it, does it help? Does it hurt us? You know, how do we heal through food? Um, so I changed my diet and I just wasn't getting better. And I'd go from doctor to doctor and we'd do blood tests. And I was told, you know, at that time I was a teenager. So I'm like, you know, everything's normal. You're fine. You're just a kid. Just don't stop worrying about it. Well, years would go on and I was getting sicker and I spent most of my twenties pretty much house and bed bound. Um, depending on where I was at, I would, I think I saw every doctor, naturopath, acupuncturist, you name it. I saw them. And I finally was like, all right, that's enough. I have to figure this out myself. Um, so I started looking into blood work. I had years upon years of blood work. Um, I started looking at mindset. I, I really dove into just that full body, mind, body, spirit healing but it all really started with blood work and how can I figure out what these normal labs were telling me? Um, but there's just so much more to it. I mean, how was a 20 year old going to be fall into the same camp as an 85 year old man or a six year old child? You know, how are we all into this normal blood work? So I really dove into where I was I at in my life and how can I optimize my health so I can get out of this bed and out of this house and, and then ultimately um, create this business so that I can help others because there was a lot of years where uh, there was not a lot of hope. And um, and I'm here to tell you today that there is hope and and we can get better if you're in that chronic illness journey. So how, how old were you when you finally said, I'm going to take control and start looking at your blood work? I was about 30. Um, I, I I was 29, 30. Um, at the same time, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage four breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, she, I'm happy to say is still alive and Yay. well, awesome. um, despite being stage four, you know, there's no stage five, but I just kind of had enough. I said, you know what, mom, you do your healing. I'm going to do my healing, but I'm going to figure out how we can heal together. And, um, so I, I would say about five, six years ago, even though I've always been just a researcher and um, I've always wanted to know why and how, um, so it's just kind of always been built into me, but I really said, okay, I'm going to go back to school, figure this out. It was online school because I couldn't, <laughs> I was not well enough to uh, go to physically go to school and um, just started diving into that blood work and, and figuring out how to heal myself. But I think really what once uh, my mom got that diagnosis was really kicked me into gear and said, okay, this is bigger than just me. I've got to be able to help others. Um, 
And I think, I think that always has been resonated with me because I, I'm a natural, um, helper, healer, take care of others, but sometimes it's hard to take care of yourself. So once, once it was a family member, I'm like, okay, (laughs) we gotta, we gotta figure this out. And that, that, that's, what's so great about your journey too, is like, I I was sitting there thinking, I remember when, you know, we're kids and even back then, I mean, I, and many, even myself, I can look back to when I was sick at certain times and my mom would take me to the doctors and it's like, you're just, you're just a kid, you know? And, and even I remember my youngest one, um, he struggled with texture. So when he ate the baby food, it was fine. But when I took him from the bottle to putting the rice in the bottle, he hated the bottle. And I was like, what's this from? Like, he's been taking the bottle the whole time. And then when we brought him from, you know, just the, 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 baby from the jar that had nothing and no chunks in it and brought him the stuff with the chunks of the peas and whatever in there he was just like would get this whole gag thing and we it was really bad and I the doctor like, oh he's just he's just a picky eater I'm like no I'm telling you like this young man would eat half a jar and the whole half a jar would come back so I'm like no this isn't just you know and so I remember my sitter goes just bring him here I'm going to give him table food we're going to figure this out and literally he went straight from that jar of no chunk to table food like he did not like the texture inside <clears throat> that, but he's always been a texture kid all his life. But you're right. I mean, you know, I'm sitting there going, wow, poor Lauren. Here she is, this little girl that's sick. And they're just going, oh, you're just a kid, you know, and, and mm-hmm. you want to play. You want to do all those things your friends are doing, but you're so sick you can't. And that's, you know, that's hard. And and then, like you said, we go on this journey to find healing for ourselves. But then when our loved ones get sick, it's like, let me just pour right in and, and you know, and God bless you were able to do that. And help your mom at the same time. I'm so glad she's doing well. And, and, and that, so that's so powerful. So, so you went on this journey and you from school. So tell us like how you, with that journey, how it got you from bed to like out of the bed. Yeah. So I started looking at different markers and, um, I started, I looked at my, my white blood cell count and these ranges are so wide. And I, I looked back through the years of what, what was this range like a hundred years ago? And, you know, I looked at some functional medicine work and what are the ranges, their optimal ranges that they're using. And I realized that my infection markers were outside of these optimal ranges, but honestly, these ranges are so wide that you could be so sick and still fall. I mean, I was, but and still fall in this normal range. So I, I realized that I had an infection going on. I started also looking at my environment. I lived in the Northwest and um, where it rains 10 months out of the year. And I started realizing, wow, when I got sick, we were living in a house that I remember scrubbing mold off of our bathtub. And, you know, just there was mold in the window seal. And so then I would kind of dig further into my blood work and I'm like, well, this marker is off and this would be a high fungal marker. And so I started putting the pieces together of I've got a fungal infection going on from being in a moldy house. And that's when my husband and I were kind of as time went on, we're like, kept trying to find healthier homes because we still lived in the Northwest. We're like, you know, we're renting at the time. And I'm like, we've got to make sure that this mold thing is, I got to be in like a mold free home. And, um, as I was working through this blood work thing. And so we actually ended up moving to Arizona because we couldn't find safe housing for me. That doesn't mean that anyone listening to this isn't going to be able to find safe housing. My body's just ultra sensitive and, you know, some of us are. Um, so we ended up moving to the desert and, um, I started finding more healing while I was working through the blood work signs that were not optimal and, um, and kind of putting these pieces together, you know, it's, it's never just one thing. I always tell my clients when I'm working with them, it's like an onion in the closer you get to the center of the onion, the harder it is and it's harder it is to peel. And so you kind of start working, you know, you start working with diet, you start working with making sure you're getting enough water. But as you peel those layers back, there's so much that goes into it. Emotions, um, you know, after being sick for so long, your brain gets into this fight or flight of spin. I mean, I just couldn't calm down because I was trying so hard to get the energy to be able to live and, you know, just in that, that roundabout way. So it rented, it it wasn't really just one thing, but it was a combination of the infection from my body, having a hard time detoxing mold, getting into environment 
that was mold free. And then ultimately working on my, my mindset to heal that last layer of, of making sure I'm in a calm state environment to where my body can heal. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we forget that sometimes we have to change our environment so much that we have to move out of state, you know, that's, yeah. and, and that's like you said, mold. I mean, like for me, it might not have bothered me so much for you, but for you, you're so sensitive to it. And, and, and to, you know, it's interesting how you talk about the markers and our blood work. So I remember I have a thyroid issue and I remember going in there, but like, oh, you're fine. You're fine. And I, you know, I lost over 60 pounds and I hit this blip where I was like, still, I'm still eating what I'm supposed to eat, but I was like putting weight back on. I'm like, something's wrong. And I would go to my doctor like, oh, you're, everything's fine. Your blood works fine. So then I went to a naturopath and I was like, something's wrong. I know something is wrong. And that's where we pulled up my markers. And so you know, you have four, I think it's like, what is it? Three, three or four markers on your thyroid, right? They do the whole panel. And I told my doctor, I want all the panels done. Don't just do the ones, the basic ones. And so she showed me, she goes, they're telling you it's normal. I think it was the number three panel, whatever that one is. And she said, it's normal because you're falling in the range. But what they don't tell you is this one here, you have to be dead center to be considered truly normal. You can be in that range, but if you're not truly dead center, really close to that dead center, you need some help. And I was not dead center. I was like, I think I was more towards the, um, if you looked at it, like more towards the worst end of it, you know, the going higher end. And once I did that, and I just needed a little bit. And then, then I, so I go back to my regular doctor and I'm like, I want armor throid. He's like, why that? I'm like, cause I want <laughs> as close to natural as I can get for my thyroid. I don't want the other one. I want armor thyroid. He's like, okay. You know, so, <laughs> so I was like, you know, and that's what I think is important, Lauren, for, you know, the people listen to, like, I'm not a doctor and I know, you know, you're not a doctor, but mm -hmm. we have, our doctors only see us for 15 minutes of visits. That's it. If you're lucky, it's 15 minutes. You might have the nurse practitioner or the girl who's doing your blood work, right? But the thing is, is 15 minutes all they have. So when you go in there, I mean, I go in with all my game plan. This is what I want to talk about. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I think it is. And, and what's so funny about our doctors. So my husband and I go to the same practice and it's hilarious. I see the husband. He sees the wife. The, yes, it's so funny. So I decide this one day, I'm going to go with my husband because he stopped taking the vitamins. I have a vitamin line. It's called isotonics and it's, um, it isolates with your saliva. So you drink it with water and it gets in your bloodstream in 10 minutes. So he stopped taking it. He goes, it's too much sugar. I'm like, dude, it's got the sugar of a grape. If that much, you know, I'm like, you have to take it. I can see the difference that you're not taking it. So I go in there thinking I'm going to sit down with her and be like, he's not taking the vitamins. And I tell her this, I'm like, I'm really worried because he stopped the vitamins. She goes, well, you know, I don't really believe in vitamins. And I was like going, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, in my head, I'm going, wait a minute. I just saw your husband two weeks ago. And he's like, okay, what are you taking? And I'm telling him everything I'm taking. I bring all my stuff in. He's like, okay, those are good. Very good. Yep. Your vitamin B is a little high. So you can back off your vitamin B, you know, and, and all that. And here she is going. <laughs> And then, I mean, and then it's so funny. We just said a couple weeks ago. So I went, I got my blood work. We both did blood work the same day. And so I go to see him and, and he prints it out and hands it to me. So Chuck comes out, we get home. I'm like, did she print out your blood work? No, she said I can get it on the portal. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, but my point is they, this is a husband and wife. Do things exactly. Opposites, you know? And so, I mean, Lauren, would you agree? Like you have to go in with a game plan of what it is. And, and if you believe in your heart of hearts, that you feel a certain way, go with that conviction. Oh yeah. Nothing fires me up more than this conversation because I mean, oh yeah. I don't even know where to start. Cause I'm just like, oh, um, I had a doctor at one point I was, I was 19 years old and she looked at me and she said, honey, we just have to realize that you're never going to get better. i had had no diagnosis. I had nothing. She kept telling me, I'm not, she told me I was never going to get better at 19 years old. And it's like, if we don't advocate for ourselves, we know our bodies the best we live in our bodies. And I, I run into this so many times with clients because a lot of times moms will go in and go, I'm tired. I just don't feel a hundred percent. And they're like, Oh, you're just a tired mom. Get some more sleep. It, yeah. I mean, we all need sleep, but 
it's it's very possible in the world that we live in today that you're not getting your vitamins optimized. Maybe you're taking the wrong vitamin. Maybe you have a low grade infection like I did. There's so many different things that it could be to that will just kind of push you off your game a little bit. I always say it's like when you have your computer tab, when you have too many computer tabs open on your computer, if you if you don't start closing some of those tabs to clear out some of that mess that could be going on in your body, your body's not going to work optimally. Yeah, it's going to run. You're going to be like, your computer's fine, but you're not optimal. And so, you know, what, whatever, wherever you fall on that scale of not feeling well, you have to be an advocate for yourself. I love that you go in and go, have a game plan because they are only with you for 15 minutes or less and go, okay, I need this, 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 and this. And if you can't give it to me, I'm going to go find a new doctor because at the end of the day, they work for us. I know that we're supposed to, you know, bow down to this white coat. Well, those white coats couldn't fix me and I had to fix me. And, and we have so much strength and power within ourselves, but we just need someone to kind of hold our hand and tweak a little bit to get you back on track. And, and yeah, it might be sleep, go home and sleep a little bit more, but there also could be other things that are affecting us. So I'm so happy that you have somebody that is a good fit for you. And, and you can go in with that, that plan, because I couldn't agree more and, and use them to get your blood work and then find somebody that will help optimize you if, if they right. won't help you. Yeah. It's funny. I said to my head, my husband's like, you know, I'm never going to change for her. Cause I really like, her. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. That's fine. But we're going to have some controls together. You know, I want you to have a game plan. He's like, no, I just, I have my own game plan. I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, but I have to say, um, a, about a month ago, my mom was here visiting and my mom arrived with a UTI and unfortunately she's getting older. So, and she had gone through the little Azo pills you take for the pain and she'd gone through a box dump. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, mom, you, you, no, 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 you're going to the doctor. So they were, it was a blessing. They got her in underneath in their office, like right away. And we had to see the wife and I was sitting there with her. We're, we're in the, in the meeting, in the room there. And my, I kind of said, you know, could doctor, can you talk to her about taking these Azos? Cause you know, I know it's not healthy for you to take like every day the azos to go to the bathroom. And she knew that I had mentioned I was trying to get my mom to move here with us. So she was so sweet. And the next day when I went in to drop off something for my mom for them, I said, I got what you did. She goes, I'm glad you picked up on it. So what she did was saying, well, you know, when you get back, you should really talk to your main practitioner about taking these azos. So I knew she was like confirming what I was saying, but she wanted my mom to feel welcome so that if she came in as a patient in the future, she would have that safety. So I was like, I got you. I, I, I get where you're going, but still, can we talk about vitamins, please? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it is true. You have to find the right fit for you because yeah. um, if you don't feel like you can share and be open and you have to hide this certain part of your life, then it's not a good fit, Yeah, you know, um, but you know, your husband's doctor wouldn't be a good for, for, fit for you, but he's happy and he'll go to the doctor and that's right. all that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. So I love that you talk about how, you know, in, in this conversation, we're talking about how we can heal ourselves and everything. And um, I would love if you're comfortable with it, like share about the story we we're talking about with your husband, because I'm sure part of what you do was part of why his recovery was the blessing that it was. Yes. So I had to reschedule on Pearl this winter um, to talk because my husband was in a snowboard accident. He lost feeling below his neck and, um, you know, it was just one of those fluke accidents. And so we ended up having to get in, get neck surgery, happy to report that he um, has feeling below his neck. He's doing really well. He's on the mend, but it was pretty scary when we got the call or when I got the call um, from him, what had happened. And, you know, it's funny because Western medicine in my journey was, it was such a painful experience, but it has such a place because if without them, you know, who knows where he would have been today, but it's nice with me because I could kind of tag team his healing on the other side of surgery. So they went in, um, replaced some of the discs in his neck and took the pressure off of his spinal cord. So he regained mobility and feeling and all that. And then from my end, I've been working on making sure his mineral status is high, making sure that he's detoxing the anesthesia from after being in surgery, um, making sure that he's adding an exercise. And also it was really scary to go through that. So how can we make sure that his body isn't holding on to the trauma that he's gone through? I, I also, um, 
when I went back to school, I learned a, a thing called mind, body, spirit release. And it's where you can have these trapped emotions stuck in your subconscious that play a huge role on your physical health. And you identify it through muscle testing. And so we've been able to identify that he's been holding on to a lot of fear and which rightfully so, I mean, it's pretty scary. And once we've been able to release some of that stuck emotions, he's been, he'll have these just crazy responses where he'll get really hot all of a sudden. And then he'll have just a little bit more feeling in the tips of his fingers. And it's amazing how much goes into the human body. It's not just one for one. And how can we approach this from every angle to make sure that his healing is optimal? You know, if we weren't working on some of the mineral status, I don't know that his, um, you know, I, I would like to think that he'd be doing as well as he is, but it, there's there's part of your bone that has to be able to heal to be able to form around those new replacement discs. And and there's so much that goes into such a crazy experience um, on, on every level, you know, but, but he is doing really well, despite a pretty scary phone call. Yeah, that's amazing. And you know, because the body is a wonderful thing. And if you can be in tune with what you said, and of course, Western medicine, I totally agree with you on that. If you can kind of, like you said, tag team together and be in tune to that, it's, it does make the healing process sometimes faster, but even better. And, you know, and then, you know, like you said, he's that blessing that he's getting all those feelings back and everything. So is he talking about going and snowboarding and all that again still? <laughs> you know what? We haven't had that conversation. I, I think about it almost daily and I'm like, I don't want to tell him that um, there's things can't. he can't do anymore, but because I think then he'll absolutely want to do them. So <laughs> I think we'll cross that bridge, but it's funny because it's like our bodies want to heal. It, we just have to put it in the environment that it can, you right. know, for me, it was getting out of the mold and getting sunlight and getting on some vitamins. And I'm after so long, I'm great. That's awesome. um, for him, you know, getting these, these replacement discs and getting the pressure off of his spinal cord to go from such an extreme thing of losing feeling below your neck, um, to now him being able to do physical therapy and doing really well our bodies want to heal. It's just that we have to be able to give it the right nutrients, sunshine, water, diet, you know, and whatever else it may be to get us there. And, um, and it's so important because it's preventative medicine is just is, is crucial. Yes. Now we don't want to deal with anything until we have to deal with it. But if we can just give ourselves that nourishment and that, that space for us to heal on a daily basis, to be the best version that we can be, um, it's, it's important because we really, our bodies want to be at that state where we're healthy. Right. So I want to ask you a question. I'm going to do a little shift here. So yeah. for the listeners that are listening, some of you um, may be caregivers. Some of you may be, you know, you're a parent taking care of your children. Some of you may be caregivers for children that are on a spectrum or, you know, have some sort of challenge that they're, that you're helping um, support them in, or you may be a caregiver for a mom or a loved one. So Lauren, talk to us about how that was for you, because you did it for your mom as well, you said, and then here's your husband, right? And, you know, oftentimes when I'm coaching, we, we have this method it's called the Shiro method, and it's a four month class, master class with weekly coaching, and we do assignments, we do one on one uh, meetings, all around, you know, creating that roadmap that allows you to have that balance in your life, be able to say no to others and yes to yourself, but also without neglecting those that you love, like how to create that roadmap so that if a bump comes in the road, that you have the tools in your toolbox now to do that. So walk, walk us through, you know, going from like a caregiver for your mom, I'm sure it was very different than what your, your husband's situation, but then how did you, Lauren, stay connected to your health while you went through both of these different situations? No, I am so glad that you talked about that because, um, you know, I'm only human and there are, there have been points along this journey where I just kind of go, I can't anymore. I feel like I'm holding the world up, but, um, for me, and it's, it's really dependent on everyone. For me, I have, a a faith aspect where I, I give my power to somebody else because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not God or source or love or whoever you want to identify as, as your you know, faith aspect. So for me, it's, it's really getting quiet and giving myself 10 minutes, you know, turn my phone off, sit there with myself, pray if I need to pray, uh, meditate, talk to my higher self, whatever it is, just shutting off and just giving myself 
10 minutes to fill my cup up. Um, and, and for me giving my strength over to somebody else, but for, it looks different for everyone, but it's really just checking in with yourself and realizing that, um, we're not in control. We, there is, um, as much as we want to be able to control. And I think a lot of times with a lot of the clients that I work with that are in that chronic illness, autoimmune space, um, we're more type A, we think we need to do this, this, and this to control it. But at the end of the day, uh, my husband's health or my mom's health, yes, I can give, help them give them tools, but it's, it's beyond me that to get them well. Um, so there's, there's so many aspects and I, and I really have found that in my healing journey, I had to touch into that space, that faith and healing space, um, for me to feel a hundred percent and for me to heal my heart. Um, but it's just so different for, for everyone. Um, but for me, that really is the kind of the sugar coating on top. And I like that, you know, it, like you said too, it's on top of that, it's also asking for help, right? Your faith is the number one, the first thing, and then asking somebody for help, you know? So if you are listening and you struggle with that, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I remember my, my dear friend, Sharon, um, her, she lost her mom in December and she had Lewy body disease and she's in Canada. So her and I would talk often. And I remember, you know, having, we often talk about who's on your list that you can call for help, you know, because it's important to do that as well. And, and like the other part of that is making sure you do tune into you first, because you can't show up for those that you need to take care of or help if you're not tuning into you first. And, um, I watched my uh, my brother and my and his family were here um, last week visiting us and we had a great visit and my sister in law she had fallen just before COVID she fell at home um, they don't they think she hit her head possibly on either the counter or the bathtub they're not sure they think she had a heart episode but they're not even sure what that was so she fell and hit her head and she has literally fifty first dates every day of her life like she wakes up. She has to look in the mirror and says, your name is Melissa. To, you know, it's not X, Y, Z date. She still thinks that February date that the accident happened. So we were, when she was here, you know, to watch her go through that. And, you know, the, the, you, you see the, she's got such a great outlook on it, you know, but every night before she goes to bed on her phone, she puts notes of what the day, what happened that day, anything that, anything that happened. And so the next morning she can look at her notes and see, but I was watching my brother and my nephew, and my nephew's eight years old, like how they take care of her and how it's, you know, changed their life. And it's, it was very sweet to see how they all manage that and manage it as a family unit, you know? And, um, so, and I said to my brother, are you, are you, you know, I was like, are you taking care of, do you need anything? He's like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, okay, just remember just cause you're a guy doesn't mean everything just like us women, you don't have to put it all on your shoulder, you know? So ask for help, you know? And, and the joke is I'm the older sister. I'm like, you can ask for help from your big sister. He's like, you're little. Cause I'm the shortest, I'm the <laughs> oldest, but I'm the shortest. I'm like, okay, we're not going to go there, but I love, uh, that's a great reminder. Um, and so one of the things, so kind of segueing us on that with like self-care, right? So, um, I, you know, I'm a naturopathic mental fitness coach. So what that means is that when I work with a client, if I find that they're stressed out or if they're not sure what to go, they're just all, they're all over the place with their life. And they're like, I need to get on my road of success. You know, sometimes there are, you know, I'll talk about like what they're eating. Like we were talking about what you put in your body, because what you put in your body affects your brain, your liver, everything can affect everything. And, you know, especially like the sugars. And um, when I lost my son last July, I kind of went on this downward spiral into some old habits that were the comfort foods. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like December, I was like, enough is enough. I got to get this back in control. And I just said to my husband yesterday, I'm like, I used to, um, he would bring um, the Atkins snacks home They're, they have, I love chocolate covered almonds. And they have this chocolate covered almond. And he used to bring those to me when I lost my weight, like, like 10 years ago. And I would have those every so often. And I said to him yesterday, I said, because I created this new dessert of my own. So I take this healthy cool whip. I can't think of what it's called. And I put my chocolate protein powder in there and I just mix it together. And I'll have a spoonful of that when I want something chocolate because I, I tend to want chocolate every night. So he's like, you have the, I bought you those chocolate almonds. I go, the funny thing is. I don't like the taste of them anymore because like the sugar, the, even that little bit of that, whatever the fake sugar they're putting in there, even that bothers me, you know? And so it's, I, I like that you know, when I work with my clients talking about how clean can you get, what can you cut out of your, out of your 
world that you're putting in that's making you feel sick, right? But then on top of that, um, I teach on the positive intelligence, which is, it's also called PQ. And there's a great app on your phone, but it talks about recognizing saboteurs, recognizing those things that want to stop you and, you know, and come up and tell you, you know, you're not worthy, you don't deserve it, right? And then to know what to do with the saboteurs and, you know, like rubbing your fingers together to calm you down, things like that. I love to take that approach with my clients. And one of the things that we work on, Lauren, it's um, we have what's called the Shira League. And so every Sunday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time, we get on Zoom. It's not recorded. It's totally free space to share whatever you need to. The wins, the losses, whatever's happening in your world. We work on things like goal settings and self-care things and stuff like that. But I did it because I had kind of started, I do pajama retreats every year. And I kind of started it before COVID with our last retreat in that people wanted to be connected after the retreat. But then COVID came. And I was seeing how everybody was stressed out. There were the moms were trying to be an employee from home, a mom from home, and a teacher at the same time, or the dads. Like I just saw all this. So I was like, we need to do something. So I started, I really amped up the Shirley and we created this whole 30 days of self-care. We showed up every single day and we did something together. And so the Shiro, people always say, what's it mean? So the Shiro is not just you're a female hero, but that you are strong you're happy, you're empowered, you're radiant, and you're original. And so thinking about that, if we can break down some of the letters with you, I'd love to walk through those with you if you'll play the game with me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Of awesome. Course. So the S stands for strong. And so I feel like, you know, oftentimes we become that people pleaser, we become that person that does for everybody else. And we forget to take care of ourselves, fill your cup, put your cape on, whatever you want to call it. And so as we walk through the coaching process in the program, you become you realize you're stronger. Like you have the strength now to say no to others and you don't feel guilty about it because you're communicating your expectations. You're having conversations around that. So if you could think about a time in your life, and it's probably just recently with your husband, but if you think of the word strong and you were to look back and say, that's when I really stepped into my strength and took my power back or took control, what would you say that would be for you? I think it would... It, it, it's happened a, a couple of times, but I think probably the one that comes to my mind where I'm like, oh yeah, I watch out world is when we were in the little room and they were giving my mom a two year left of her life diagnosis. And I sat there and I, you know, kind of let that go one ear out the other. And I, I said, let's, I know that that's the story of many, but that's not going to be our story. And, um, and I really took my mom is extremely, we're extremely close. I talked to her 40 times a day. So, um, so I really took at that point when I was really sick and, and I'm getting this diagnosis where I could be losing my mom and saying, uh, no, you're not God. I'm not God, but I know for a fact that we're not going to listen to this two year diagnosis. And so, um, I really took that and ran with it. And I think every day since then, we have built this um the strength and we even started a separate company called Kissed by Cancer where we we look at every day as such a gift and i know that people say that but they don't live it and because it's hard you know we we get doing our thing we make breakfast we take the kids to school we you know go to work but to a, to be able to go okay time out you can't tell me how my life is going to be. You can't give me that diagnosis of I'm never going to get better. And, um, and in fact, watch me, you know? So I think that there's, there's been a couple of times, but that one comes to mind. That's a great example. You're right. Cause you know, they can give us a number and all that. And you know, it's, it's like, no, I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I don't have to accept that. Right. And then, yeah. and you're right. Life is short. I, I, um, I talk about with my son, when he passed, we literally talked to him 20 minutes before he passed. He called us on the phone. He was in, he was in the car and he had a car accident 20 minutes later. And, you know, I tell everybody all the time, I knew it before, like he passed that life is short, take it yeah. by the bullhorns. But after it's like, you need to live every day. You need to like, if there's something you want to do, just go do it. Don't, don't wait, you know? And, and um, so that's, I love that, that reminder that you don't, it doesn't, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So don't let somebody tell you, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. I, um, I lost my brother-in-law to a car accident unexpectedly. He was 33 mm -hmm. and it was the same thing. It was like, it's so quick. And, 
you know, as you grieve and you go through the motions and the waves of grief, you go, you just go, wow, like I am so lucky that I get another day. Yes. And, and every morning that we wake up, you know, no matter what we're going through and and life is hard. I mean, we, we don't get out of this alive. Like life is hard, but it's so beautiful. I mean, I get up every morning and I'll live in this place where I, I have an orange tree out my backyard and I go out and I can hear the birds and I just think, wow, I get another day. This is amazing. Yeah. And, um, and, it, and it's, it's so easy to get busy and wrapped up in the minutia, but if you really slow down and you really take a breath and you take your power back and you realize that, that we're here just such a short time, it's, it's pretty miraculous what we get to yeah, experience. It, it really, it truly, truly is. And so the H now stands for happy. So as you become stronger, you get that little, that feeling inside starts stirring around the butterflies or, you know, you're like, oh, I haven't felt this happy in a while. What's happening here? So if you think about that and think about the word happy, what, what makes you smile? I mean, I know you get up in the morning and walk out, you kind of describe it with the birds, but truly what makes you, you get up and go, that just truly makes me happy when I can do that. So I have a few things that, that pop up, but one of my favorite things to do, I got this rebounder during the pandemic, a little mini trampoline, and I turn on my music in the morning. I set my timer for 10 minutes and I, I put my headphones on so I don't bother my husband and our dog and I bounce and I listen to my favorite music and I bounce and I dance and there. That is the ten best ten minutes of my day. I swear, I can tell the days that I don't do that because I'm just a little bit off. But but I swear, I don't know what it is about the bouncing and the music, but it's like the perfect combination. Um, that and any time I have interaction with animals, I have a little fourteen year old Maltese poodle. But I'm just always been an animal person, and so there's something that just touches my heart with whether it's watching a dog video online or, or walking her around the block or whatever it is. Um, but those are my two favorite things during the day is just. <laughs> so if anybody's, wa- anybody's listening, you can't see, I mean, you can hear it in her voice, but you cannot see the smile that's on her face. As she talks <laughs> about that. So you have to go watch on YouTube but at, at conversations with Pearl and follow us there. And you can see Lauren's big smile. So I love that. So then the E that comes along is empowered. So I feel like as you become stronger and you're finding your happiness, now you're empowered to do those things that maybe you've been putting on the shelf and you haven't really gone after because everybody else had to come first, right? And other other things had to come first. So if you had a magic wand and today, Lauren, you could weigh that magic wand and do anything in the world that you were empowered to do, what would that be? You know, for so long, I wanted to start my business. I, when I graduated from high school, I knew that I wanted to be a naturopath and I, I don't know what it was behind me that just told me, no, um, I went to college. I felt I wanted so badly to go back to school and become a naturopath and build this business. So honestly, I'm living it right now. I, um, you know, I struggled for so many years, 16 years is a long time when you're in your teens and twenties to, to not be healthy. And I imagined the life that I'm honestly living right now. And, and I know that might sound a little conceited, but I, every day I get to go get up and do what I love. Um, I live in a place that I love. I have an amazing husband. I have an amazing family pets. Um, but it, it really came back down to that business that I started and it takes guts and I'm, I'm a pretty introverted person. I'm I'm pretty quiet until it comes to this aspect of my life where I just get fired up and I want to change the world. Um, it's very vulnerable to put yourself out there. I made this website. I, I'm on social media. That is not really who I am um, until it comes to this space. And I just want to scream it from the rooftops because I'm so proud of myself that I've built this. And I'm so happy that I get to share my knowledge with others. And so you are the perfect example when we coach and tell, when I work with people, be find your why, because it will make you so happy once you live and stay in that lane of your why. And so that was a great example. I love that. I just love that. And then the next one is R for radiant. And so radiant for me is sort of like you're glowing up. And I stole that from somebody that was a guest before. She's like, oh, you mean like kind of glowing up? I go, I like that. So like radiant means like, you all these things are starting to line up, right? This, everything's coming along and people are noticing. Like people are noticing that, you know, they're looking going, 
Lauren, did you get a new haircut? Like, did you lose some weight? Like, are you wearing new makeup? Like, they're noticing it, right? But you're like, you're just walking in, you're commanding that room, commanding that space. So if you think about radiant and radiance and like blowing up, where in where in your life today, what's happening in your world right now that you feel like that's where you're at, like you're glowing up? Oh, as I as my business evolves, I'm getting more confident. Um, you know, you, you put your, like I was saying before, you put yourself out there and I'm not really that person that I I'm pretty quiet. Um, and so now I all of a sudden have this confidence because I've, I'm working with people. I've seen their improvements. I'm working, I've gone through my own journey. I've seen my improvements. Um, and with time you get more, more and more confident in yourself. And I really think that when you pair confidence with also quietness, giving yourself that quiet space every day to build yourself up to where you can go out and be confident, it's this this fine balance of I can take on the world, but I've also nourished myself to be able to do that. And and I've had to work hard um, the last couple of years as I've built my business because I get so excited and I'm over here all day long and I'm like, like Friday comes around, I'm like, I'm so tired. Like I really depleted myself. And so now I'm finding a better balance of finding of making sure that every day in the morning I give myself an hour to nourish myself before I get on and am confident and and help nourish others. And that's so true because you know, whether you're a professional or you're an entrepreneur, we do we go, we go, go, go so fast that we forget, like you said, like take that time out so you're not depleted by the end of the day, the end of the week, so that you can enjoy the rest of the time to come. So that's a great reminder. And so that's gonna lead to another question for you. What's your favorite thing to do for self-care? I take a bath every night. I get a, I get done. I do with dinner. We do the dishes if we need to take the dog for a walk. But I come back and instead of shower, I just take a bath and I either turn on relaxing music or a podcast that I've put, um, you know, on to, off to the side. And I just give myself twenty minutes in the bathtub. I, you know, wash my face. I. It's funny because before I, you know, you get out of the shower, you throw stuff on. Like, why don't we just massage our face a little bit and like give us, give our physical bodies a little bit of love instead of just throw some stuff on and be on to our next task. Right. Um, I know it's easier to say I don't have children right now, so um, that that might change if <laughs> if that uh, comes into our <laughs> life. But um, really giving myself and just slowing down and and giving myself that time in the evening to slow down to where I can get a good night's sleep and start all over again. Yeah. And I'm going to say that when, if, and when the time comes for children, you can still do that. It's still, yes. you know, you create that, that pattern. And I think that's what happens many times is we as moms, especially think we have to do everything. And back to my sister-in-law, one of the things she said, is she says, she calls it a CEO mindset that I was like, she, I went to go visit her. This is before her accident. And she's like, Hey, Sean's going to put his clothes away. Come on upstairs. Well, Sean was only like four years old. I'm like, he's going to put his clothes away. Okay. But she's like, listen, this is a house. It's a, it's not my home. It's all of our home. We all have to have a piece of the business here. I'm like, I love that. So that I started calling her the CEO mom. I just like that. That was so cool. So you keep that in mind, Lauren, when that comes. I will. I absolutely <laughs> will. That's good. To, sure. That's good to note to self. But, yeah. So the last letter is O and O is original. And some people call it your authentic self. I believe, and oftentimes when I'm coaching women, they're like, I don't know who I am. I'm like, you do know who you are. You just aren't in tune to her right now. So I feel like as you walk through all of this and everything's everything's coming together, you're ready to put that last part of your cape on. That O is original. And I, you know, I often tell everybody, listen, when you come into this world, like you were saying earlier, no matter who you believe in, I believe that, you know, God for me has said, this is what you're going to be. I've created this for you. This is going to come. All these things are going to come. It's already planned out. Right. And so for me, I'm like, if you don't tune up that talent that you've been given, if you don't work on what that is and that DNA that you've been provided, that talent, you're cheating yourself, but you're really cheating me and everybody else because I can't receive the knowledge like you had, Lauren, about this is what I need to look at my blood work. This is why I need to look at my blood work. I can't receive that knowledge if I don't do something about it, right? So thinking about O and being original, how would you describe yourself as like that authentic self? When people, when people think about Lauren, what would they describe you as? Um, it's funny because we play this game, this last part with my family a lot of like just three words or what's three companies that would describe you. And I, my family knows me so well, as well as I know myself extremely well at this point. And I am extremely lovely, loving. 
um, kind. I, there's, there is not a mean bone in my body. I don't know how to be, um, that kind and soft person. I think that that just kind, soft and sensitive person. Um, and then goofy. I just, I love to laugh and I can be silly and, um, my husband says quirky. <laughs> There's a, so um, between that combination and my my little research uh, nerding out station, I just <laughs> with with what I do now for for a living, um, I think it's kind of the ultimate combination for what I've been put on this earth to do. I love that. I can see that quirky and all that about you. Just in the, just for the, those listeners, you have to go watch YouTube. She's you just got such this beautiful smile, and you're very very. You can see the kindness as well in that smile. So I'm just looking at my watch. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're <laughs> this time's flown by. It has. It has. So tell everybody, Lauren, um, how they can reach you, and if you have anything you want to offer, I don't know if you have a free offer or anything, but tell everybody how they can reach out to you and social media, and we'll also put everything in the show notes. So. Those that are driving and listening, you can um, get this off the app as well. Yeah, perfect. So I'm on TikTok and Instagram at Medella Healing, M-E-D-E-L-L-A Healing. And then go to my website, MedellaHealing.com. I have a free blood work guide on there. So you can download it, get it to your email, and then compare your blood work to my optimal numbers to see where you fall if you're not feeling 100%. So shoot me a message on Instagram or um, email. And I, yeah, I can't wait to connect with all of you. Awesome. We'll make sure to put that in show notes. I'm going to have to eat. I'm going to have to hop on there and take that compare my blood work because I have my blood work now. So that'd be really, really fun. Perfect. So, so, okay. So everybody listen, I've already forewarned Lauren that we do the better questions, better life cards. If you're not familiar, if this is your first time listening to us, better questions, better life. There's 70 different cards with positive affirmations, positive um, questions. There are questions to make you think about life. There's, se- I think there's 77 in here. So I usually take one a day. I'll read it, journal on it, whatever. Um, so you can go to betterquestionsbetterlife.com and grab your copy there. So Lauren's going to tell me when to stop and we're going to see what it brings up for her. So here we go, Lauren. Okay, stop. Well, she went at the beginning. Fast. <laughs> fast. Oh, this is this is a good one. What okay. principles do you live by? Oh, um, lead with love, pray, and nourish yourself. Lead with love. Such a good, yeah. And prayers always are, of course, taking care of our body is so, so important. Yeah. So this has been so, so much fun, Lauren. And um, hopefully we're going to work this out. Lauren and I are speaking today. I'm actually going to a summit in, in um, Phoenix. So we're going to try to get together. I would love that. I would love that so, so much. And so I just want to remind everybody that we have our Shiro League meets every Sunday evening, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to check it out, just email hello at WS living or hello at wsliving.com and just put the word Shiro in there and we will send you all the links. You can also follow us. Um, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, um, Facebook, and it's Pearl Sharenza, and that's with a C. But just go to Conversations with Pearl. You can also message us there. But I just want to remind you, everybody, as you come into this world, you are a rough oyster on the outside. You've got some things to work on, but as you work on them and you open them up, you have your own inner pearl. And I hope today that you go out and find your inner pearl of greatness. Have an amazing rest of your day. Hi, my name is Pearl Sharenza and I'm with Women Successful Living. I want to tell you a little story. You see, once upon a time in the middle of COVID, I noticed that more and more women were overwhelmed. We were having to balance households. We're having to become teachers. We're having to work our job while we're trying to become a teacher. We were sitting in our home with our children and our spouses or our loved ones and feeling overwhelmed. We were lost for where we're going to find space in our own house. So I was feeling that this overwhelm was stressing women out more, that they felt like they could not have a Calgon take me away moment. They felt like everywhere they turn, somebody in the house would find them or their job wanted them on another Zoom meeting. And I just felt so sorry for these women as I spoke with them and felt the pain because I too was feeling sorry. I was feeling sorry that I couldn't go out and do the things I love to do. I could go out, yes, and take a walk and sit on my front swing, but I couldn't go to the community meetings and the fundraiser functions or go have lunch with a friend or go to the movies with my husband or just take a a moment away from everything that we're responsible for as moms and wives in our homes, right? 
you become that CEO mom and you're running a household. But then if you're working outside of the household, not only are you a CEO mom, and if you're asking what a CEO mom is, that's a mom who is running the household. Because let me tell you, you're not sitting around eating bonbons every day. You truly are running a business of a home. But then maybe you also work outside of the home. And here you are, you're trying to balance working in the home, working outside the home. And then maybe you have children and you're having to learn how to become a teacher because bless our teachers, they're trying to learn a whole new way of teaching through Zoom. And so as I spoke to the women in my community and my clients, I found they were also feeling all this overwhelm. They were becoming stressed. They were sitting in, in the home with all their children and their spouse and they're going, I'm with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I love you, but I don't love you that much. Were you feeling that way too? So I found as they were feeling this way that I had to do something. And every day, about a month after into the pandemic, I decided to try something new. I decided to create a space where we could meet via Zoom. And yes, I know another Zoom meeting, really Pearl, but I just knew that was the only way that we could get together. And the rule was you had to go in a room where you could put a note in the door and say, I'm on a break. I'm on a timeout. Whatever you want to call it, you can make that note on your door. Because really, we have to take time for ourselves in order to really take time and care for our family, our loved ones, and our job the way we know we want to and we need to. So what I did is I created what we called our self-care Sunday evening. And it actually became Shiro's is what we ended up naming it. Because we as women, we are the hero of the house. We're the hero of everything we do for our family, our friends, our job, our, whatever that is that you're responsible for, right? But are you really the hero for yourself? So that became important to me. So one day I decided I want to pour into these women. So I brought them together on a Zoom meeting. We met Sunday evening, 8 p.m. We finished up by 9 p.m. We just had conversations. What was challenging them? What was the pandemic bringing up for them? How were they doing mentally? Were, were they doing something to take care of themselves? And if you heard me before, I say bathtubs and taking baths are not self-care, but really during the pandemic, sometimes that's all you could do was get in a tub with bubbles and take a few minutes for yourself, right? So as we poured into them, I, I noticed that they were starting to enjoy the self-care. They were starting to be less stressed. They were starting to communicate better with their family and their, and their loved ones because they could communicate why they were taking time for themselves. They were able to communicate that it's not that I don't love being with you. It's that because I love you so much, I need time for myself. So on Sunday evenings, we worked on things about self-care challenges. We created a challenge of self-care where every day they had to do something. It could be something that took them one minute, or if they wanted to, it could be something that took them an hour. But it was their job to do something for themselves every single day. And then because of that, they they saw that their family, they were worried that their family might feel make them feel guilty. So we started incorporating ways that they could do self-care for ourselves as we also did something with our family, right? So in some cases, we found that we were sitting, we had moms sitting and just watching TV, silly cartoons with their children. That's self-care, right? Or maybe playing a puzzle game or putting a puzzle together. And then when it came to their spouses, we found that they were sitting and finding movies on Netflix or writing, playing cards, or even we gave them a challenge. We have a friend that has these great cards. They're called Better Questions, Better Life. We even would pull a card and have a discussion with our loved one around that card. And then as they were working from home, some of the, our, our professional women were finding that their jobs were having much more demand on them that because they were home, they could actually kind of have more time they could grab for them. Oh, well, you're home all day long, so you really don't need to take a break. So they started finding that some of their jobs and their bosses were expecting them to give more. So we talked about how to set boundaries around our schedules. We talked about how to set boundaries around how much we want to be on Zoom. And as we did that, we found that the women were less stressed and they were actually performing their job performance better. They were having better and more improved relationships with their loved one, with their children. 
And some of them also had family that were in nursing homes. So we were creative on how to spend that time with their loved ones, but also making sure that they were taking care of themselves. So as we did this, I saw that it was a need that needed to continue. So even though the pandemic, is, as we know it today, is over, I found that the women loved this so much, we needed to continue this. And who knew that three years ago when I started this, that it would grow into what we have today, this amazing community of women that we still meet every Sunday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. We talk about things that bring us joy. We talk about challenges we're having in our lives. We're talking about things we're having to overcome. We have some women that are struggling in their marriages. We're talking about how we pour into them and how to help them work through communication We have amazing, amazing guest speakers that come in every month. We've had Jane Pilker come in and talk up to us about our mind and the neurological part of our mind when it comes to our eating and our health and sugar and how it affects our body. We've had Seth and Tora come in and talk to us about the smile method and how we have things such as just the smile within us that can make things like mock acceptance where we're accepting things because we think we have to accept them. Like, for instance, my loss of my son, Matthew, I never knew that when I created this group three years ago, almost now, how much I needed these women. And because I have this community of women around me, I met Seth and Seth taught me about mock acceptance. And he taught me that, yes, I was accepting the loss of my son, but I wasn't truly believing that he was lost. And I was sort of like going through the motions. So ever since I have put this group together, this community of women, we have watched the women flourish. We have watched them have less stress. We've watched them communicate better with their loved ones. We've watched them put boundaries around their self-care so that they can achieve the things they want to, so that they can put their cape on first as they pour into their family even better. And ever since we've started this self-care Shiro group, it has grown where we now at our retreats, we have women joining us during our retreats. We meet every year. We have a retreat in September. It's a pajama retreat. You come in your PJs, no makeup. You have about four days at the beach, sometimes the mountains, depending on the year. And we just have sessions and breakout groups on how do we improve on our self-care? How do we continue to communicate our needs to our loved ones? How do we find what our goals are and our visions are? And how do we bring those to fruition? Because how many of you ever sat back and said, I have this big goal and I really want to do it, but nobody believes I can do it. I want you to know that we believe in you and we know that you can do it. And so if this is something that you want to learn more about and come and enjoy a great way to end your week and begin your week, I would love for you to join us. Because on top of our speakers, we also have an amazing meditation coach where she empowers us to sit down and just take some quiet time for ourselves and just be in our own space as we reflect on what we truly want within. And I am so honored to watch the progress and the growth that the women in this community have accomplished And I cannot wait to see what's coming up for all of them and hopefully for you. And if this is something you would love to learn more about, I would love to invite you to come and visit us one Sunday evening. Like I said, it's a great way to end your week and a great way to start your week. What better to know that you've got a balcony of people sitting and waiting for you to join them, have a cup of tea maybe, and just do some laughing, maybe a little crying, but no matter what, know that you've got a girlfriend there to have your back. So if you're ready to check out the Shira League, I would love for you to join us. All you have to do is email me at pearl at wsliving.com. That's pearl at wsliving.com. And I would love to connect you. I hope today you know that we've all come into this world. We're a little oyster. We might be a little rough on the outside, but on the inside, you have a pearl. And I hope you find your pearl of greatness today as you become the Shiro I know you are. My name is Pearl Sorenza. 
Do you know what your score is for your self-care? Find out today. Go to pearlssurvey.com. That's pearlssurvey.com and see what your score is today. 